hello guys welcome to my digital concept youtube channel today i will be showing you how to use microsoft word to design an invoice for your clients or for your customers and you will be learning the processes of how you can create your own invoice if you have not subscribed to this channel yet kindly consider subscribing to this channel so as to get more videos like this from me and to you thank you very much now let's go into the tutorial what you're going to do first of all is to navigate into the inserts bar at the top red bin so you click on insert then you click on table and you are going to select the number of rows and columns so here we have one by one table we have two by one table okay on my own voucher i would like to create two rows and nine columns all right let's say two columns two rows and eight columns two by eight so after you might have selected it so you click and then that is it but before then let us remember to add the name of the organization okay so for this organization name i'm going to use the, the master publishers the master publishers so I'm going to select it and align it to the center. Let me also increase the character a bit so that it will be distinguished from the rest of the body. And also, what are we trying to create here? Drag this one to the bottom side and then enter the name of what you're creating. That is, sorry, payment voucher. This one needs to be smaller than the rest so i'm going to reduce the font size and unbold it then move straight to the table the first cell we have the amounts the second cell that is the first Second cell on the first row, dates. Move to the next tab, method of payment. Then, okay, move to the next place, cash, check. So then we have the sum of that will be the amount that is being paid. And I'm gonna skip this session being and we have paying approach. Paid by then let me partition this particular cell into two. What I'm gonna do is to select the cell first, after selecting the cell, I enter split cell number of columns to number of columns one. So you click on OK. As you can see now, the cell has been successfully partitioned into two. So we'll have the third cell on this particular row. Then signature. Let us begin to create enough space for entry of data on the table. So I'm going to come to this corner like this. And then immediately I get to 
the tip of the corner the cursor will change onto an arrow so that means i can decide to drag it anywhere I like so i'm gonna drag it to the bottom then after that you can see that our texts are aligned onto the top left side we can actually change this by clicking on this plus sign here okay so I click on table properties so as you can see we have successfully aligned the text to the center so another thing we might want to do is to ensure that our text move to the center of the table but it will not be necessary for this kind of table because we are still going to be having data input so not align it to the center here it is but i'm going to leave it at let alignment and you can also change the face of the fonts there by coming to the fonts tab here you can choose times new i can choose this particular font to go down bold but i'm going to leave it at calibre and change the size to size 12 and after that i'm going to be shrinking each cells to accommodate what i really want to make so i'm gonna shrink, shrink this one i'm gonna make this one to be smaller also so as i move the cursor down you see that the cursor changed to another thing so immediately you see this sign you hold the left mouse key and you move up so that is it we have equal spacing here and also here so i would like to turn these two cells to one and what am i going to do i'm going to select both of them then i right click and i select merge cells you can see they are already merged together and the next thing is to also shrink these cells Ash. then shrink this one also i'm going to turn this also to one so i right click and then i merge cells the sum of okay i will create enough space for this so that the person who will be entering data they will be able to put in the right thing I mean, we have enough space to put in the right thing then being payment for the purpose of the payments will be here and then the pay the name of the pay are put by put by and then there is a space to append one's signature now i don't like the way this cell this particular cell and this one are of the same size so i'm going to change the size of this particular cell i'm gonna make it to be smaller in width so I will drag like this and then I want to expand this space a little bit so I select the space and sorry I move the space back and another thing we can do to our table is to if you like you can add more rows and you can also delete the rows that have already been made so if i want to add row now i come to the top i want to add an additional row to the top so i come to the top and i right click i go to insert add rows above so that is it i want to match this 
cells and I want to turn them to one. So you select and you right click, you click on merge cells and I want to enter text also. Kindly fill in correct details. So let me try and align this to the center. I also like to make this character to be bigger and bold. Yeah, let me remove this. I want to change this to uppercase. So you select and you hold on the shift button and the F3 button together. I've successfully changed everything to uppercase. Then let me also try and add some colors. I want to add a different color to this upper cell, the uppermost cell. Select the cell. Paper properties. Borders and shading. So you plan to box itself. You select cell and shading, no color. You pick any color of your choice. Page border. I'm not going to use a page border. So just click OK and click OK here. So as you can see, the change we just committed has been applied to the selected cell. Also, I would like to do it one more time here so that you can see the way. You select the cell first and you right click, move to table properties, come to borders and shading, then you click on shading. You select a color of your choice. Then you click on OK. Okay, as you can see, the color has been again committed, and as you can see here, this is a simple payment voucher we have just created. So we can decide to export this in different versions. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna export this particular payment voucher in PDF format. That is portable document file. Come to file and you click on save as the location you want to save it. So let me select desktop and I'm going to have to pick the format here. You see this is PDF. Let us use a different name entirely. And insert payment voucher. So you click on save. So our document is gonna be saved as payment voucher.pdf. Now to see if our file was properly saved as PDF, here is the payment voucher we just created.